Hey guys, I will be doing problem uh, 118 called Pascal's Triangle. And the problem states that given a non negative integer, num rows, generate the first num rows of Pascal's Triangle. And to generate the first, to generate the items in the row, um, it says that in Pascal's Triangle, each number is the sum of the two numbers directly above it. So uh, this number is going to be the sum of 1 plus 2, so we get 3, and then this number is going to be sum of 1 plus 3, which is 4, this is 3 plus 3, which is 6, and so on. Great, so it seems simple enough. Uh, let me copy this input-output example um, into a quarter pad, and if the input is 5, we want to return 5 rows, um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Great, so let's first try writing a function called generate. And we'll take in a number of number rows, and we first handle the case where the number rows is zero. So if the number rows is zero, we just want to return an empty list. Although I'm not sure why anyone would call this, um, but the problem did say that it takes in a non-negative integer. So, um, so now let's get uh, to more interesting problems. So. The output will be in a, an array, but let's first initialize this output with just the array with the first row, which is um, just one by itself. And now what I want to do is I want to create a loop, and in that loop I will keep on, I will generate a row from the previous row, and I want to keep on running that loop until the output matches the size, the size of the output matches the number rows. So to do that, I'll do a while loop, and while the length of the output is less than the number rows, I want to generate the next row and add it to the output from the previous row. So previous row would be the output of negative one. So negative one gets the last element, so that is the previous row. So the one, the first time we would call it, previous row would just be the first row. And now we want to have a function uh, that will generate the next row from the previous row. So next row would be um, generate next row and we give it a previous row. Great. And now I want to add this to the output. Um, and at the very end I want to return the output. Now let's now we have to write this function uh, called generate next row and let's take the previous row and um, let's see uh, we know that the previous row will have the previous row will have one more element than the row before so what I'll do is I'll create a array for the next row, and I'll initialize it to be the size of the previous row plus one. Uh, but we have to mine our uh, order of operations, so we have to add a parentheses. And now uh, we know that based on the problem, the first element and the last element are always going to be one, so I can just fill those in right now. So the first element is equal to one, and the last element is equal to one too. So I can actually do that in one line, like this. So one will be set in both those cases. Now we would do a loop to fill in the center items. So uh, let me align these so that it looks better. So it looks like we need to do a loop from the second item to the second to last item. Um, and what else? Let's see. And once we're in this loop condition, um, if we have this index i, we want to look at the previous row and add the same index i plus i minus 1. And these two numbers will generate this 4. And for the 6, it's generated by the 3 and the 3 here. And for the 4, we look right above it and we uh, look one to the left of the row 
above it as well. And for the one, this is already filled in from the first case, we don't have to worry about that. So as I said before, we want to loop from the second number to the second to last number. So for index in range, second number is one, and second to last number would be the length of the new row um, minus one. Yeah, I think that's right. Length of the next row minus one. So great. Yeah. Uh, because if we wanted to loop through all the numbers, it would just be the uh, zero to the length of next row. So uh, if I just want to ignore the first and last, change this to a one, and I subtract one from here. So now the next value would be the previous row and the index at this previous row plus um, the index right before it. So this is the next value. And I want to put this next value into the next row uh, at this index that I am iterating over. And now I can just return the next row. Great. So this looks good. Let me call generates on five and see how it goes. And uh, this problem here because we have a list here, but we're adding it to a number. We really want to get the length of this to initialize this next row. So let's fix that. Great. And this looks right and matches our test input. But there's one more thing I, uh, I think we should do. Maybe I think that this if condition is not necessary because um, if the row was empty, I think this function is, would be still smart enough to fill in these uh, positions. Because this will fill in the first and last one, and the first and last one would just be this is the one element. So we won't even get to here. And within this for loop, we, uh, we won't be able to fill in the for loop because it um, this would be a range from one to one. So that would not uh, reach any elements. So we don't even execute this. So we, I think, can just get rid of this uh, condition here. And we can test this out with five again to make, that, make sure that it works. Ooh. I see. The output will have to be a list of zero elements, uh, in which case the output would look kind of weird. Um, I can keep track of the previous row, and I would say the previous row would just be the empty list. And then at the end of this function, I can say the previous row is the output of negative one. Great. I think this will work. Great. This looks like it works. It gets to, to a zero. And this also works as well. Uh, give it to one. This looks good. So let me copy this and submit it to the code. So I'll copy the code here. And inside this solution function, I will return generate of numbers. As, uh, as submit and great uh, I guess that's it